With the European fire ants, we have two problems to sort of overcome. And the first is to locate the nests, and the second is then to actually remove the nests. And in the first instance um, of finding the nests, what we try to do in some areas is lay out grids of apple. And so what we've done in this area here is apple uh, pieces have been laid out. Uh, and as we sort of move amongst the apple pieces, uh, when we start to see high numbers of fire ants on them, after leaving them out about an hour, or an hour and a half, and when the temperature is sometimes between say 15 and 20 degrees, that's ideal. It doesn't have to be exactly like that, but that seems to work the best. Um, when we find a lot of ants on the apple, we know we're within a meter or so of a nest. We have some fire ants on this, which means that we're relatively close, but it's not totally overwhelmed with fire ants. Um, but if we come over here, we can see very a little closer. Um, we can see this has a very large number of fire ants on it. And so that's telling us that we're very close to a nest. And quite often we'll find dandelions, something that they like quite a lot. Um, and by disturbing the ground, we will often find the nest. So here's an instance where we have um, the fire ants, a uh, fire ant nest, which is located in this dandelion root wad. And as you can see on this brochure, the uh, pictures of the ants are about the actual size of the real ants themselves. And so once we've located a nest like this, and this one is quite a thriving nest, um, and while we know that they've got lateral escape tunnels, um, this is the uh, type of nest that we would like to sort of focus our attempts on for treatment. And by treatment, um, to dig out about 10 liters of, of the soil, that'd be about half a 20 liter bucket, um, and use a low concentration permethrin uh, on that soil. Now, this typical nest will probably have more than 20 queens in it. Um, and so when we put the shovel into the ground, some of those queens are gonna head out escape tunnels. But if we treat this soil with this permethrin, then the queens will be forced um, to go back into that treated soil. Um, and it appears to be a more effective method of control uh, for, these, uh, for these ants. So the European fire ant tends not to be quite so aggressive when it's simply out foraging. Uh, but when you step on a nest or disturb it in the way that we've just done here, these are definitely the more aggressive ants. And here we're gonna have sort of a high likelihood of being stung. Okay, so once uh, we've located the nest, we're going to try and dig it out and treat it. Uh, we have this bucket here. It's a 20 liter bucket. We try and fill it about halfway, so approximately 10 liters of soil that we treat. What I try and do is just get a, a good circle around the nest and then dig out as much as will fill up half the bucket. Once I've done that, I look around inside the hole to see if got as everything that I want to get out of it. If not, then I can always dig a bigger hole. And the depth can be, can vary depending on the site. Might just be grass root mat added. One thing too, in this area we have to be careful of is there's irrigation lines underneath, so we try not to break any of those. So I'm just kind of looking around to see if there's any tunnels leading out where the ants are coming into this hole from, which doesn't look maybe right here. Sometimes the tunnels, like right there, you'll see them as you start digging. Um, so even if there's no ants coming in, they may be going out. So in that case, once I'm done treating this, I do a perimeter check. For instance, right over here, there's another nest. All the ants are coming out, so we know we can dig another hole right there. And so this is a little bit less than half the bucket. Usually I treat for about 90 seconds. I'll spray. 10 seconds and shake it around for approximately 10 seconds. But because this is only about a third of the bucket, I'll go down to just 60 seconds. 
and that just provides the application rate for the product. I also found it's good to do one um, spray in the actual pit that I've dug to capture any of the ants that didn't get caught. And 10 seconds is pretty much, um, it, you just look like you've saturated the top layer of the soil there. What Naomi has been doing here is adding about 200 milliliters of the permethrin, and that's 0.25%. And as Naomi noted, you can get that concentration of permethrin available um, at uh, hardware stores. Now, permethrin, which is on the surface, will break down um, in about a day, or at least half of it will break down exposed ultraviolet light within a day. Within the soil itself, it would last though about half of it will break down in about 30 days. So that keeps some of the permethrin active in the soil for a longer period of time so that queens that have headed out escape tunnels are forced to move back into the treated soil, you know, which will still have a reasonable amount of the permethrin in it. And while Naomi is using a professional sprayer, this 0.25% uh, permethrin that's being sprayed is the same concentration that's available in hardware stores. So um, you don't have to have you know, the apparatus that you see here. Uh, you can't purchase the same product yourself. And so once I've put it into the bucket, you can either just use the shovel to mix it around. However, I find when you get a really hard mat of grass on top, for instance, like what I got, it's a lot easier to just shake it up in the bucket to really break up that hard mat. And also probably shakes loose some of the ants that might be sitting in there. And same for this, the 10 seconds is about that, and it just looks like you saturated the top layer. And so for the 90 second spray for the 10 liters that would be half this bucket, that's about 200 milliliters of this um, spray of the treatment. But for this, since we're only doing the 60 seconds, it'll probably be about 160 milliliters or 150. I don't do a spray on top um, that's been mixed in enough that they should be fine. But we do put this on. This just prevents anything from coming near the, uh, the treated area. Right. The, the, the permethrin is a low concentration, 0.25%. And as a note, in treating head lice, um, the uh, product that you can purchase at a pharmacy is actually uh, 2%. Um, so this is one-eighth the concentration which you can actually apply to the skin. Um, but uh, permethrin is somewhat more toxic to cats than most other mammals. So this has very low mammalian toxicity, um, but cats are a little bit more sensitive. So we've been putting these screens over um, for a couple of days after treatment in an abundance of caution. Now the permethrin does break down. Um, it is a, a synthetic product which is related to the organic uh, product that's extracted from chrysanthemums um, and about half of it will break down in 24 hours on the surface when it's exposed to light. So the surface um, very quickly becomes completely safe. Um, but in the soil itself it requires the microbes to break it down and so about half of it breaks down in about 30 days in the soil. And that's why we're seeing some um, efficacy with this because the queens that have gone into the escape tunnels will typically have to move back into the soil um, and it will remain with a good amount of permethrin in it for a period of time um, so that we are seeing good results at, at killing the colonies with this approach even though we're using quite a low concentration. Uh, you will see uh, quite often still some active ants on the surface 
Um, it doesn't matter that you're not killing them quickly. Um, the permethrin is going to have an effect and they are going to succumb to its effects um, in a relatively um, short amount of time. So once we've done treating this, uh, we find it's a good idea to kind of do a perimeter check. Um, you'll often find another, either another nest or an escape route where the ants are, the disturbed ants are trying to get away from where you've dug. So like for this one, we can look at the areas where there's the dandelion's roots and right there, they're, they're swarming. So this is obviously another nest right here. You can see them even coming out of this one right here. So in this case, we would just dig this out and treat this as well. That way we can try and target that tunnel and keep them contained and hopefully that whole area will be treated.